Hey everybody, Tom Christie here, back in the studio. I just wanted to pause for a minute um, and thank everybody because it's been eight months since I started this YouTube channel. The feedback has been uh, very positive and uh, encouraging to me. And today I'm celebrating my 100th video on the YouTube channel. Eight months, 100 videos, I never would have expected that but uh, the feedback has been encouraging and uh, again just want to reiterate my goal here is to uh, continue this great art form and get other people engaged and involved and help people out who would like to give it a shot and that seems to be working so we have uh, 1677 people subscribing to the channel. I hope that continues to grow. And uh, it's an international audience, which is very exciting to me. Thank you to all of uh, those of you that are carving in other countries. And it's kind of fun to have this type of virtual carving community together to complement the other forums that are already out there uh, that I'm a part of and I'm appreciative of. But anyway, thanks. I'm celebrating 100, uh, thankfully, videos today, not years. And I uh, look forward to 100 more, hopefully. So let's get to the uh, carving session two of the Buffalhead decoy pair. Thanks a lot, everybody. And this is session two of carving the Buffalhead decoy pair. And in session one, we kind of roughed out the bodies, got the heads band sawed out, started shaping up the hen's head. And in session two, we'll be working on shaping up the drake's head and then refining the detail, like the bill details on, on both heads, hopefully in this session. I won't duplicate all of the, uh, the video in making the head of the drake because a lot of the processes are similar to what we uh, did with the hen but there are some unique shapes with the drake's head i'm going to carve him in a real low head tuck position and the feathers of the cheek tend to splay out at the bottom there's a little bit of a return down there but uh, we're going to want to duplicate that in the wood and also i mentioned the crown of the drake is a little more narrow uh, than the hen, so we'll go through that as well. If you're valuing the content I'm putting together, uh, please hit the subscribe button. That helps me out, and uh, you'll get notification if you want to, if you choose to, of new content as I continue to add to the channel. I really appreciate the feedback, the suggestions, the encouragement, uh, and hopefully this is helpful to a lot of carvers out there. Uh, both brand new carvers that I'm trying to encourage more carvers to get going and people that have been doing it for a while that we can share these techniques and, and learn from each other. All right, before we get going on the carving, I did have a couple of questions about the specific bits I'm using. Uh, sometimes in the video it goes by pretty quick, I realize that, so I'm going to spend just a minute here this morning with some close-ups of the bits that I use for 90% of the carving that I do. And hopefully that'll be helpful. All right, here's a quick overview of what I use for 95% of my carving, maybe 99% of my carving. I'm not saying this is the best approach, I'm just showing you what I use if that might be valuable. Especially if somebody's just starting out and they don't wanna buy a ton of uh, tools. This would be the kit that I would recommend. You can get all of these from James Company. That's J-A-Y-M-E-S Company or uh, the Duck Blind, which is Willie McDonald, uh, also sells these types of supplies. So just a quick overview for rough out. I use saber tooth bits. The yellow are the fine tooth. The green is like a medium tooth. I lean towards the fine tooth. Uh, it goes a little slower, but it gives me a little more control, doesn't tear and snag as much as the green bits. These are three quarter inch, roughly. All of these are rough dimensions. 
in diameter. This is a cylinder has teeth on the end of it, which I find helpful. And this is a, a bit I use a lot with this kind of ball nosed cylinder uh, because you can use the end of the, the bit as you go and that's helpful. I've put a, a couple of carbide cutters up there. I don't use them that much, but I do, do use them periodically. Those are carbide steel uh, and they they do some shaping. I use a lot of these, uh, I'm calling these cut saw bits. They could be saber tooth bits. Uh, I think both companies make very similar products. This is a flame shape and this is a little cylinder shape. And again, the cylinder has teeth on the end of it. And that's helpful if you want to do some uh, tight work and use the end to do some grinding. Uh, these are then moving into more of the refined work. And these are ruby bits. This is a bullet shaped. I'm calling, these are my own names, uh, bullet shape, pyramid shaped, ruby bit, a round, that's probably a quarter inch ball or less, maybe three sixteenths. This little flame shape is really helpful. And this cylinder, which is about about three millimeters or about an eighth of an inch in diameter and has grit on the end of it is also very uh, a tool that I use a lot in in detailing. I've also not found too much difference between the diamond grit and the ruby grit bits. So I use both kind of interchangeably and I use kind of a medium uh, coarse grit, uh, but you can also buy very fine grit and very coarse grit. And then these bits down here are for detailing. These are small cylinders. This is probably a millimeter in diameter, maybe a millimeter and a half. Uh, again, those are rough guideline dimensions. These are probably diamond, and this is a little round ball that I use for nostrils and for getting in tight spots where you can use the end of that ball to do some shaping. So those are all kind of in the ruby diamond bit area. And then I use this cushion sander a lot and that is about 150 grit. And that sandpaper is interchangeable. They give you a little tool to remove the sandpaper when it's worn out. And there's a rubber uh, drum, cushion drum, under the sandpaper and that gives you a little cushion as you're uh, using the sander and shaping. So that is a quick overview and hopefully that is helpful. I'm gonna even zoom in further. A lot of these bits are um, really filled up as you can see because they've been used for a long time. But that's a good thing about this. Uh, you can use these bits for a long time. And I've had many of these for many, many years and they're still working for me. All right, enough of the uh, tool talk. Let's talk carving. Okay, I've got the Drake's head mounted on my holding handle. Um, and then I'm gonna use that round nose, three quarter inch saber tooth burr and go in above the cheeks and begin to narrow to that crown dimension that we established before. And I'm going to speed through this section since it's very similar to what we did on the hen. Just trying to hit that guideline dimension we penciled in on the top. And just take your time and blend that in as you go back and forward into the rear of the head and into the bill up front. I'm gonna skip ahead, but you, here you can see I'm st starting to round the bill a little bit while I'm in that area and blend that into the, the crown area that we're defining here. Okay, skipping ahead, I've got the crown on this side where I want it to be, and now I'm just using the, the same bit to kind of round the cheek and I'm not taking material off at the base. Uh, there's also a little notch back there that I want to keep in place and not lose that from the pattern. 
That's where the white patch goes to the rear of the head. I'm going to leave most of that material down there because the feathers are splayed out against the body. Okay, I've gotten that taken down to the crown with target width at the eyes, at least to begin with. And just wanted to point out kind of the cheek shape from the front. These are going to be resting down on the body and kind of pushing down. And so I've just got a little bit of return here on both sides so we don't have a square edge there. But you can see it starts here and kind of pushes out to the widest part down here at the base of the head. Now we'll do our layout of the bill and use the same process we did for shaping up, rough shaping up the uh, hen's bill. So we'll do that next. Okay, same type of layout work we did on the hen, but it never hurts to repeat. Uh, from the tip of the bill back to where the upper and lower mandible meets. And we go to the carving tip of the bill and we're finding that point out in space on both sides that we want that return to come to. And remember this is up off the throat somewhat so it doesn't come clear down here. We need to leave room for the lower mandible and the detail there. We're going to take material out on both sides, checking it out from the front. That looks symmetrical from the front. So we'll use the little ruby cylindrical bit. So it's this little kind of one eighth diameter cylindrical bit. We'll use that to remove wood on both sides and take it down so that the bill width stays consistent as it goes back into the face underneath. Speeding the video up and just uh, showing quickly removing that material in that area and then also using it to define the edge as the, uh, the bill meets the notch up above. Getting that done on both sides and you can see the width down there that I was talking about, maintaining the width of the bill as it goes back into the face. And then cleaning things up and ready for the next step. Now I'm going to use that ruby bullet shaped bit and go into that ledge that we've created and soften that and blend it back into the face and also the the cheek area as it meets the bill there so there's a nice soft transition and I'll speed this up kind of shaping things up and then I'll also use this bit to begin doing some more rounding on the uh, bill itself so we're beginning to shape up the bill get it more of a rounded configuration so that it's ready for the detail later. Once I get things shaped up, I'm going to get the pencil out and just kind of map things out again and then mark the corner there for my pattern, draw in the upper mandible line Make sure it's symmetrical on both sides like that. Now I'm using the knife, put that little curl up in the corner. And then like we talked about before, just carefully, slowly doing multiple scores here. down, go underneath, make sure the camera can see it, and score this area underneath, 
to match up from the side. Just take your time. And then we want to remove this little triangle. And now we'll clean that up. Do that both sides. Now I'm going to use a little pyramid shape ruby bit and just uh, it's got a enough of a point on it that you can go in and just use it to clean up that lower mandible area and where it curls up into the rictus area where the upper and lower mandible meet at the face. And then I'm just going to use that same bit while I'm in there to do some general rounding and shaping. I can tell I need to spend a little time sharpening my knives because I'm a little ragged on that knife cut. And so that just created more work. Now I'm going to use the knife to form that lower mandible as it meets the face down below. So I'm cutting back and then slicing out a little piece to put some definition in that area. And now I use the little pyramid ruby bit to clean things up and begin to form that V shape under the throat there. I'm also going to use that same bit to kind of dig in and create a little bit of structure around that lower mandible as it meets the face, particularly in this kind of puffed up pose with the uh, drake. I want to convey that there's feathers puffing around the lower mandible there. Let's get a shot of that. All right, we've got the head rough shaped and now I've got the dimension between the eyes that I'm looking for and you can see it's not much wider than the bill from the front. So I'm gonna have to go in like we did on the hen, create these deeper groove areas to get the eyes the proper width. I'm going to use that bullet shaped ruby bit to kind of dig a trench along the eye uh, leading up to the edge of the bill there and then rounding going down towards the cheek and also rounding up towards the crown. Do the same on the other side. I have this video sped up, so I'm not carving quite this fast. And I'll go back and forth this kind of iterative process, but you're trying to maintain symmetry. And uh, I'm not quite there, so I'll keep digging. So I've got it about as deep as I need to go, and now I'm just using that bit to blend things out and make sure there are no harsh lines. Quick check, and yeah, I'm good. Now I'm going to use that bullet-shaped ruby bit to just do a little rounding up where the V-notch meets the crown and uh, get that rounded with a little more control than I'm going to have with the, with the Fordham and the much larger saber tooth bit to, hog off wood up there. So I'm just rounding that and then I can use the other bit. All right, we've got that shaped up. We've got the eye grooves in place. Now I wanna work on the crown. We don't want a sharp razor's edge up here, but it's gonna be pretty narrow at the top and kind of angle down from there to the width that we are down here at the eye channels. That looks a little weird right now, but I'll show you uh, what we're doing here. 
Okay, I'm back to the bullet or rounded uh, saber tooth burr. I'm just going to start rounding the crown. This is another uh, example of where it's really good to have this handle to hang on to. If I was hanging on to the cheek of that small head and trying to do this work, I'd be so close to that bit, it would be scary. So I would really recommend that and uh, just on, on the smaller birds. So I'll speed through this. You can kind of see what I'm doing, rounding, and uh, we're going to bring it not to a point, but to a fairly narrow crown on top. You can see I'm blending that into the back. As we go, now I'm going to take off wood on the other side. And the rounded bit here is really nice because uh, you're not digging in and creating any lines and you can kind of use it to round into the eye channel there. You can see that's uh, starting to shape up now. I'm leaving the uh, profile, the, the pattern profile intact. So we don't want to lose the center line and lose the shape of the head, including that little notch in the back where the white patch comes back to the rear of the crest. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna speed through some video here where I'm forming some cheek structure. We did this on the hen, so I'll just speed through this I'm using that uh, bullet-shaped ruby bit, creating the groove, and then going back and forth, rounding so that we don't have a trench there. We just got a nice, soft look. Particularly in this tuck, tucked head position, I think this really helps uh, convey that position. You've got a little bit of a some cheek structure as that bird has got its head tucked down. So that's that's looking pretty decent. You can see some shadows there. Now I'm shifting to that sanding drum and I'll just use that to rough sand the head. And then we'll do some finished sanding by hand. I use uh, normally use 80 grit Swiss sandpaper for the initial rough sanding and then kind of go down to maybe 150 and then eventually 320 to put a nice soft finish. All right, we've got the head shaped up. Since this is not a decorative, full decorative bird, I'm not going to try to carve the white patch. I'm gonna paint that in, uh, but it is important that you check your reference. That patch shape can change depending on the attitude of the bird and how high or low the head is. So just make sure you check your reference on that. And that's what I've been doing to match up with the pattern. I'll uh, redo that once I get the eye installed, but I just like taking a look at how it's shaping up. All right, I think we'll wrap up the carving for the day. We've got the head roughed out, and uh, next time in session three, we'll do the details on the head, probably get the eyes inserted, and uh, then start working on the bodies. Okay, a little shorter video today, but with the tool section thrown in there, I thought this was long enough for this particular video. So in session three, we'll do the details on the head, get the eyes in, and get ready to work on the bodies. So until next time, have fun carving. Talk to you later.